I think it's fair to say that Shadow the Hedgehog has been taking a back seat in the Sonic series for a while now. My boy has been through some dark times, in some cases, darker even than his own tragic backstory. Don't make me laugh gruesome image. And he's by no means alone in this either, pretty much no Sonic character escaped the 2010s untarnished, it was a nightmare. But with the success of the movies and positive reception of Sonic Frontiers, it seems to be a nightmare Sonic fans have finally woken up from, and there now seems to be a concentrated and coordinated effort to get both the series and its characters back on track. We've seen this with stuff like the Knuckles prologue and Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog game. Characters other than Sonic are important again, and with the Year of Shadow now upon us, a year where he will feature not just in a game but also a Hollywood movie, it finally feels a little safer to have some hope for Shadow's character again. And that's just what the Shadow 101 video we'll be talking about gave me. Hope. In case you missed it, Shadow 101 is a video released by Sonic Team in order to give new and returning fans a brief history lesson on Shadow. With a brand new movie on the way and his long-awaited return to the game series just around the corner, it's important for them to get Shadow's character and motivations back in the front of people's minds again. And it's great to see that Sonic Team not only know this, but have come out swinging. Narrated by Mike Pollock's Eggman as he reads from his personal data log, the video describes Shadow as the ultimate life form, an ageless, unstoppable living weapon. Unfortunately, he lives up to the hype. Something that really surprised me though, the only time we hear Shadow speak in any of these clips is one where he's voiced by David Humphrey. I'm the world's ultimate life form. To be honest, I was surprised to see them use any lines from past voice actors, and I make absolutely no secret of the fact that David's take has always defined Shadow for me, so that was a nice surprise. Shadow's air shoes also get a nice plug, and really, I wouldn't have even considered this part of the video worth mentioning were it not for the fact that I'm convinced the Sonic lore team seen the commercial for them in Project Shadow and thought it was cool enough to do their own version. Hey, maybe I'm wrong, but Shadow's air shoes didn't even get explained in his debut game. He just had them. Yet here we are. Air shoes! Eggman then highlights how Shadow can actually keep up with Sonic, and that he's just as strong too. This is a huge shot in the arm for Shadow, especially after spending so long in obscurity. Older fans or newer ones who've done their research might know how strong Shadow is, but now, in the eyes of anyone being introduced to the series for the first time, he's shown to be an equal to the series' main character, and considered just as big of a threat by the main antagonist, so much so that he's fully aware his best chance of beating either of them is to figure out how to get them to destroy each other. That's pretty cool. Next, Eggman moves on to Shadow's limiter rings, also known as his inhibitor rings. These keep his powers in check, and without them, Eggman describes him as a raging furnace, virtually unstoppable for a short time. He theorizes about beating Shadow by making him overexert himself, and much like how he mentions Chaos Spear and Blast, I suspect the Limiter Rings will be a mechanic for Shadow in Sonic X Shadow Generations. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised to see it be important in the third movie. Imagine including a moment like this before a moment like this. God damn, I can't wait for this movie. Eggman laments Shadow's ability to use Chaos Control, and we're treated to a series of clips of him using it in various games. It's nice to see 06 and even Heroes getting their moment in the limelight, even if in the case of Heroes it was only briefly. Just makes me want to explore their stages in this game even more. When describing the process of Shadow's creation, Eggman details his grandfather's use of DNA from Black Doom in order to complete the project. And you could really tell they were trying to recapture that obvious pride he had for his grandfather in Sonic Adventure 2. Needless to say, that was all brought to life by the talented late Dean Bristow, but it was great to get to hear the current voice of the character have that moment, and I think he captured it well. That mad genius. <laughs> Black Doom expected a champion in Shadow, while Gerald just wanted a cure for his granddaughter. As for Shadow himself, he just wanted to live in peace with his only friend, Eggman's cousin Maria. Eggman recounts how Gun, the guardian units of nations, wanted to erase all evidence of the project, sealing Shadow away and, as he puts it, silencing anyone who knew about him, including Maria. You can actually hear the pain start to creep into Eggman's voice here, saying that while he never knew her, he still takes her murder personally. They sealed Shadow away and silenced anyone who knew about him, including Maria. I never knew her, but I still take that personally. 
This ties in nicely with how he spoke of her in his audio recordings in Frontiers, but it also shows that no matter what else you might think of him, Eggman has immense pride in his family name. Like his grandfather who he looked up to, Maria was a Robotnik, one who had her potential snuffed out before it could be even fully realized, and both directly and indirectly influenced some of the most breathtaking science mankind would ever see. So it's absolutely believable that Eggman would be angry about her death. He talks about finding his grandfather's journal and unleashing Shadow upon the world, only for him to turn around and betray him in the end, leaving Eggman with not one, but two hedgehogs to deal with. Silver and Amy just be like, what? In Eggman's eyes, Shadow now prowls the globe, ever vigilant for threats to the planet. He is unstoppable, he is the ultimate life form, and you better remember, it's no longer I am, it's now, he is. He is! Honestly, as recently as two years ago, I couldn't have seen myself watching a video full of information I already knew and saying that it filled me with hope for Shadow the Hedgehog. Scratch that, for the franchise as a whole. Ian Flynn's writing and the hard work of the lore team really is paying off dividends. For all those characters who have been long since abandoned and the series in general, there's not only light at the end of the tunnel, but we are now coming out of the tunnel altogether. There was a period of time where all we really got outside of the games and TV shows themselves was cringe tweets from the official Sonic Twitter account. But look at us now. Entire side games released on April Fool's Day. And not just any side games, good side games. Games and movies now have marketing campaigns, comics, and entire animated prologues to hype them up. As a fanbase, we truly are eating good now. And it's so much better to be able to look towards the future of this series with hope as opposed to dread. It really is a good feeling. But now I'd like to hear what you guys think. Did you enjoy the Shadow 101 video? Or maybe you still have some reservations about Sonic X Shadow Generations or the movie or the series as a whole. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure to turn on notifications to see more from me. If you'd like to support the channel and see your name credited at the end of my videos, you can check out my Patreon or become a channel member. Your support is much appreciated and a huge thank you to those of you who already have. But for now, a big thank you for watching, and as always guys, take care.